Well, hello everyone. This is Crystal. Welcome back to Emerson Aurora Design. I'm going to show you how to do my dragon skin technique on this tumbler. I purchased this 20 ounce tumbler. It's Lincoln Outfitters tumbler. It's a pre-painted tumbler I got um, from a farm, <laughs> a farm store. Um, it was on sale. <laughs> but I'm going to show you that you can um, use these cups. So I'm going to sand it really well, clean it with alcohol, and do a swirl pattern with silver and black here. You can use any spray paint. Um, one's a glossy and one's a satin, as you can see. So um, you want to have something to catch the bubbles. I'm using this little aluminum foil pan and I'm going to put some paper towels down because this is going to get messy. Um, you need some UV resin. I'm using this silicone brush. Dawn dish soap mixed with water. Um, it's pretty concentrated with soap. And a straw to make bubbles. A UV lamp to cure your resin. So make sure you place down paper towels. Like I said, this soap it gets everywhere. So um, I know this technique isn't new. But it's new to me. It's the first time I've ever done it. And I've been wanting to do this for a while. I love the texture that the UV resin and the bubbles make. So um, I'm just going to squirt my UV resin down on the tumbler and spread it out. I'm doing this in sections because if you were to do the whole cup with UV resin um, and then the bubbles, you're going to have a lot, a big mess on your hands. So do this in sections. Um, just spread it out. Um, thinly. It isn't too thick of a um, layer. And then you get to blow bubbles. <laughs> My goal is to get the tinier little foam-like bubbles, but I, I'm okay with a mix. Um, it took me a minute to kind of get used to how to make these bubbles. So just spread the bubbles on the resin there. And um, I'm going to grab my UV lamp here in a minute, and I'm going to put that right over top of the bubbles and it's going to cure that resin in a really cool texture. So I think I set my UV lamp to be for 30 seconds since I'm doing this in sections and it's going to be exposed to the UV lamp multiple times. 30 seconds should be good. One thing to note, you want to make sure that you don't dump your soap and water mixture on the cup because that will just make a mess. <laughs> you just want those bubbles and the foam to get on that UV resin to make your texture. Keep lots of paper towels at hand also because that soap does get everywhere. So once it's done I'm going to wipe it off. It should be cured. Instant gratification with this UV resin. It's great. So you could see that texture but you'll be able to see even better later when I apply my mica, mica powders. So I'm going to keep applying this in the sections. Um, you can overlap the resin to your previous layer um, if you aren't liking exactly how it turned out. There's really no right or wrong with this. Uh, it was kind of fun. Um, it took a minute to try to figure out how to, you know, where to put my hands, make sure I have everything close by. Um, it's just a fun experiment, and I really recommend trying it because it's it, it turns out so cool in the end, and you'll see. But um, I like to try new things and I always get excited whenever I have something new to try. So this UV resin is a lot of fun to work with. When you're working with UV resin, make sure that you're working in a well ventilated area. Um, it does give off a little bit of an odor. Um, you can also wear your PPE, um, your mask to protect yourself. Once it is cured, it is set and hard. Um, but you don't want to ever use UV resin on the outside layer of your tumbler. So this is the bottom layer. Obviously, I'm going to be putting regular resin over top later on. Um, but this is a neat way to apply texture to a tumbler.
So in all this probably took me about 25 to 30 minutes to complete um, the texture around the whole cup and of course I forgot to do the bottom but that's okay because because later on I'll go in and just put some mica flakes on there so here's the textured cup and it's a little hard to see the texture but you're gonna really see it pop here in a minute I'm using using several different mica colors um, I'll link these in the description below most of them are by Arteza and I have one that I purchased from Aliexpress and these are chameleon flakes that I'm going to put on for an added pop of color. So I have two little makeup brushes that I purchased at the Dollar Tree. They're really nice soft brushes I like to use for my micas. And this mica here is absolutely gorgeous. It's a red gold orange shift. Um, I purchased a pack of mica uh, chameleon mica um, powders from AliExpress and they are such good quality and they really were pretty inexpensive. I really love this mica. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I'll link it in the description below. And you can see I'm just kind of dry brushing this on. I did not apply any tacket or any adhesive at all. This is just being brushed straight on to the cup after that UV resin has set. Mica powders are pretty um, easy to use. You don't always have to have an adhesive because um, you know doing this technique I want that texture to stand out so it's going to highlight those higher areas on the texture if that makes sense you see that isn't that beautiful really makes that texture pop and this is what makes the cup so I'm going to use a sapphire blue which is like a blue purple and then like a periwinkle I think and I'm just guessing the names off the top of my head. Like I said, I'll, I'll link them in the description. But I was going for um, kind of purples and blues and the red with this. So I'm just blending those in. Um, the micas will change color depending on the background. So this is on the black portion of the swirl. And I'm going to put um, some white chameleon powder on the white portion just blending it in and it gives a really pretty metallic shine surprisingly I did not add any glitter to this tumbler <laughs> there's no right or wrong when you're applying your micas just kind of brush it in rut work it in with this type of cup like I said it's um, I'm just trying to really accent that um, texture and this is a dragon skin tumbler but you can also use it almost like the um, surface of the moon. That would be a neat, neat cup. You could do like a galaxy with this texture as a surface of the moon. It looks like craters. So that's a neat um, little twist on it. You could try. Um, it can also look like lizard or, you know, any type of um, scaled creature. <laughs> use your imagination, you know. There's so many ways, so many different ways that you can um, do your own twist on this cup. And that shine is absolutely gorgeous. Isn't that pretty? I'm really loving this. So I'm going to do that silver side. And for the silver side, I'm going to use these um, color shifting pearl pigments from Arteza. One of them has a pearl to green kind of tint to it. One of them is a bubble gum, so it'll have like a pink. And this one, I believe this one is a uh, light green maybe. It's hard to tell. I, I know I used a green, a pink, and then I couldn't remember what that other one is, but like I said, I have them listed. This one's the pink. You can't really tell it's pink until you go to brush it on. It has a chameleon change to it. These, pig, these um, chameleon mica powders are so neat over this silver base and you'll see here in just a little bit when I show them close up for you um, and then when the resin's applied it really looks like opal like an, an opal stone it's really pretty I purchased these in a pack of I'm not sure if there were 25 or 30 different micas from Arteza like I said I'll link that pack below this one is like a really soft green. 
So just work those in really well with your soft makeup brush and really highlight those areas and they'll look great. So now I'm going to show you how I'm going to apply these chameleon flakes. These are basically little flakes of, I don't even know what they're made out of. They're like um, little iridescent, irregular flakes, um, almost like a cellophane that change color depending on which way you look at them. So they all look kind of white, but they all have a um, shift to it. So I'm going to take some Tacket and just brush it on in different random areas and then I'll go in with my soft brush and lay those flakes down. These chameleon flakes are absolutely beautiful. This particular set of chameleon flakes that I purchased were from AliExpress. I was a little disappointed at how small the packages were when I received them. You can see the little tiny dime size containers that they came in and I used almost a whole a whole um, whole container on this one cup but they are just so pretty and if you really want depth and a really neat color shift to your tumbler I do recommend some mica flakes um, there's several ones available in different shops these just happen to have come from Aliexpress Aliexpress is um, Pretty, most everything that I've ever purchased from Aliexpress is pretty uh, well, co good quality. It just takes forever to get them shipped because they do come from China. Um, so I'm just brushing that um, tack it on in little thin areas, kind of all over the cup, and you'll see me apply that um, the flakes here in a minute. Um, I'm just going to pick it up with a little makeup brush and lay them down. Now since I didn't put any texture on the bottom, and I really wish I had, so if you guys uh, reproduce this cup, don't forget your bottom. But I'm just going to put the mica flakes on the bottom. Um, I do wish that I had the texture down there, but um, that's okay. I would guess I was in a hurry. <laughs> so now that it's tacky, I'm going to pick up those flakes with the makeup brush. Um, it just kind of picks it up with a little bit of static. And those flakes are nice. They kind of lay flat. They're not they're not glitter. Um, they're almost like a gold leaf texture, real thin and irregular cut. And they kind of fly everywhere. You can kind of see them flying in the floating in the air. But they are just so pretty. And oh my gosh, this cup when it's once it's resined, every angle you look at, you see a different color. So it turned out really pretty. I'll let you watch this part.
Well, you can kind of see how many different color shifts there are in this cup. I can't even name them all. Every direction that you turn the cup in, you'll see a different color. And that was exactly what I was going for. It's so pretty. I'm going to show you next after this. I'm not even going to seal it or anything. I go ahead and put it right on my turner and I'm going to apply a flood coat of resin. This is when that resin is curing. I just wanted to give you a really good close up of how beautiful this is. This is after the first coat of resin. Um, I do end up putting two flood coats on. Um, but look at that. That texture is gorgeous. And then when you put the resin over top, it'll be smooth. So it gives the illusion that it's textured to the touch, but it's actually really smooth. So there's a lot of depth there. And that iridescent color shift is just gorgeous. Now my thought for this cup, since I was um, did that black and white silver swirl, I wanted to do like a dueling dragon. So I searched for an image and I ended up finding um, an image of a dragon here I'll show you on Etsy and I can link that below. I cut this out on gold metallic um, vinyl and I wanted to make it into like a yin-yang uh, pattern almost where the dragons are foot to tail or head to tail um, in a yin yang kind of design um, like they were fighting if that makes sense. Um, it took me a while to try to design this and um, I like the way it turns out but you know looking back now I wish I hadn't even have put any decals on this cup. This cup is so pretty by itself. I probably didn't need to add the dragons but that was my original idea so I just went with it and um, it turns out pretty but I really wish maybe that I would have held off on putting such large decals on it because it does take away. So this is a template I made um, I just printed this out on regular printer paper so that I would know what size to make my dragons and where to place them. And that's the style I'm going for there when I place these. I'm not going to bore you with me um, messing with this cup too much, these decals. Um, also, <laughs> this metallic um, vinyl, it is Cricut vinyl, it's the gold metallic, it has a metallic feel to it. Every time I use this I forget how much I hate this vinyl. <laughs> It's not forgiving, and since it is sort of a metallic texture, it is, um, you know, it shows every little bump. It doesn't stretch well, so I really don't like this vinyl. Um, so this that's another reason why I wish I would have left these off, but oh well, um, it's a learning process, and this is the first time I've done this cup, so I wanted to just do something. <laughs> I'm sure everyone has experienced that. So I'm going to put one dragon on the black side and the other dragon upside down on the silver side um, there so that it looks like they're dueling. So when you, you're putting on large decals like this, you want to split it up a little bit, kind of cut into the texture um, so that it can conform well to the curve. Um, I couldn't have made this any harder for myself. I'm using a 20 ounce curve, which and it has pretty sharp of a curve and I'm using the metallic um, vinyl so go figure right guys talk about ambitious but <laughs> oh well I fiddled with it enough and it ends up working but um, ugh, what a process anyway <laughs> I'll let you watch this part
So you'll see me here kind of fiddling with this. I make little slices in the vinyl to try to get it to lay flat on that curve. Um, I, I cut it along a seam so that way it kind of disappears once you lay it flat. And like I said, this vinyl was no fun. <laughs> I would definitely do a different type of vinyl um, with this if I were to do this again or use a straight cup. It may be easier. So I'm going to jump ahead here in a minute. I, I, um, I'm going to jump ahead and not bore you with all of this, but um, after this, after I lay down my vinyl, I am going to put two layers of resin and let those cure and this is what the cup looks like um, when it's finished. I'm gonna get a real good close-ups here for you so you can see that pretty texture. Sorry for my camera not focusing well but I did the best I can. <laughs> I want to say thank you so much for watching my video and taking the time to watch this. I hope you learned something new today. You can see how pretty that is. It looks like an opal doesn't it? Um, if you take this and you try it yourself, I'd love to see a picture. Um, you can use this in so many ways. Thank you so much for watching my video. And if you're new to this video, my, my channel, hit subscribe. I'd love to hear a comment. And I hope you guys have a beautiful, blessed day. Happy crafting, you guys.